show you what silence is. That's what a woman is supposed to be doing in the church. Total silence. According to the Bible. Read. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Go ahead. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman. But the woman, go ahead. Being deceived was in the transgression. How do you know they turned into witches? Go to Revelation, the second chapter. Start at the 19th verse. I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel which calleth herself a prophetess. So, so the Lord said, this is Christ speaking here too. He's speaking to the church of Thyatira. He says, listen, I respect all your works, but y'all have one problem up in that church. Because you suffer, that means you are allowing that woman Jezebel, which call up herself a prophetess. That's your female preachers, sorceress. Female preachers who claim themselves to be prophets. Why? They're telling you the future. Prophetesses. Read. To do what? To do what? Notwithstanding, to teach and to seduce my servants. To teach and to seduce Christ's or Yeshua's servants. She's not supposed to be teaching nothing in the church. And to seduce, that means you're, you're influential. You're turning people to Satan in the church. Christ was speaking to those that were in the church right here. Read to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. That fornication is spiritual fornication. Dealing with other gods like you have in the churches today. And to eat things that are sacrificed to God. If you notice, in a lot of these churches, they tell you that it's okay to eat anything you want if you pray over it. Read. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. He gave this prophetess a chance to repent from her fornication. That means he gave the woman in the church a chance to change. Like these women pastors, you have an opportunity to change. If you're on a pulpit, step off the pulpit and back your man as the minister or preacher in the churches. The way God intended. Or what? Read. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Read. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. So according to Yeshua, judgment is coming. Christ the judge is bringing judgment in this earth. You women that are on the pulpit, that are, that are bewitching God's people, you better back up. If you don't know a man, find a man to stand in that position. Because that position belongs to a man. His name is Yeshia. Read. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyteria, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. It says, but unto you I say, unto the rest of Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, that means you don't allow women to preach and teach, and which have not known the depth of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. So he's telling the brothers and sisters in the church, the only burden he's going to put on you is to get these women off the pulpit. And it's satanic. That's the fornication. Having your members deal with another God. Dealing with another God. So all the churches need to read the message that Christ gave to the seven churches. Because that represents the churches all over the earth. So if you have, a, if you have something 
that's going on in your church that's different or that opposes what Christ ordered, he give you a chance to repent and change it. And we, like we said, the prophetess Jezebel is a spirit of a witch. Because it bewitches people to go to other gods. Y'all with me? Last thing. Let's go to Acts the ninth, Acts the eighth chapter. And before we go there, some people may smoke marijuana or do cocaine. The drug dealers are warlocks and witches. Okay? There's a Greek word in the New Testament called pharmaki, which is drugs. Pharmaki. It's, it's what they used in ancient times for potions. Magic potions. So when these chemists be cooking up the crack and all that to give the neighborhoods your CIA and all that, how they cooked up and made a, a, a crack and how they made LSD and all these different drugs, they are sorcerers. Look what it do to, to society. They are sorcerers. Your drug dealers on the corners, they are sorcerers. That's why we ask, are you a witch? Are you a warlock? They're sorcerers. Because you're feeding your people something that is totally destroying their minds and deteriorating their spirit. Changing their normal patterns. Your doctors are witches and warlocks. Your psychiatrists are witches and warlocks. Your nurse in the school that, 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 is, that is suggesting that you put your child on Ritalin is a witch. Is a witch. It comes from the Greek word pharmaki, mind altering potions. Potions. All right? There was another guy that was dealing with witchcraft. We're going to get him right here in Acts, the eighth chapter. Acts 8, and let's start at the ninth verse. But there was a certain man called Simon which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria. So there was a man named Simon. Now this, this was an Israelite now. This was an Israelite. He was a certain man called Simon, who which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. And I've seen brothers like that all over the place. They would proclaim that there's someone great. That's what the first thing you have to watch out for. Christ says, many shall come in his name, come, many shall come in his name saying that Christ shall deceive many. Anyone that's pushing themselves up and saying that there's somebody, sorcerer. Okay, no one is great but our father. Okay, he sent his son, Yeshua. We walk in his footsteps. Any man who claimed to be any greater than any other man, sorcerer. And we've seen it firsthand. Guys coming out with all types of symbols all over them, talk, claiming they somebody. I'm the Holy Spirit. I'm this and I'm that. The same spirit that was on Simon Magus. Read. To whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of the Most High. And our people are like sheep. They seen the power of Satan on this guy and swore that it was the power of God. And you tell me what, does this, does this parallel some of these churches? Just because this guy may be eloquent or what have you, if he claimed to be something, and he don't fall in line with these...